I'm afraid there are some people in Colombo who really have to see the dark side of everything unless it's done by their favorite politicians. I think the remarkable thing is terrorism has been defeated, which I think is extremely important. But I think there is a relentless message going on about partnership and plurality. You know, I think it's particularly important that communication in Tamil is taking place. And I think it has been vital that although we've had Tamil as an official language for the last 22 years, it's only been in the last four years that there have been concerted attempts to get public servants to speak in Tamil. There have been attempts to, and very successful attempts, to recruit Tamil policemen. And that is going ahead now at a real pace. We need fuller integration. And I think that is so clearly going ahead. You know, in one sense, I suppose, um, you know, we have to accept that people will criticize as they want to. But it's been very, very clear from the people I've spoken to in the North that there is an understanding that we are in a pluralistic situation. We're not a majoritarian situation. We're not going to say that just because, you know, you have a majority, it must dominate. Because ultimately, a country is about all its people. And what we've got to do is liberate all individuals to, so that they can function. How do you do that? You free them physically, as has happened now, when they've got away from this tyranny of the LTT, but you also empower. How do you empower? You produce decent infrastructure. Now, I think one of the tragedies of this country is that for 40 years, no one bothered about infrastructure. I was absolutely delighted last week when I drove to Batikalo, not last week, just three or four days ago. I took the road from Kandy to Mahiangara. And that has always been one of my favorite roads, but it was a very simple road. I used to do a lot of travel on that in the 90s. And it's now being expanded. Uh, I think the road to Jaffna has to be built up well. That's going ahead. I mean, it's idiotic that we never even thought of having a quick road to Trincomalee until about 20 years ago. You know, it took ages. So you need to connect. You need to make sure that whatever is produced can be transported up and down. You need more outlets, both harbors and airports. Those need to be developed. But in addition to that, you must empower the people. You've got to bring them together through educational tours. Now, one of the things we do through our ministry is what's called the Confidence Building and Stabilization Measures Project. And we have, as it were, district committees, and they suggest things. Now, a couple of them have actually done a lot of work in doing school visits to allow people to move up and down and talk to each other. And that's so important because for many years no one in the North and South spoke to each other. They didn't have a common language and they didn't have the opportunity to travel. I think it's so important that the government is moving ahead so quickly with the railways and the roads. The road development was fantastic. You know, when I was in the East in 2008, it took hours to go from Trinco to Batticolo. When I was there a year later, you could move very, very quickly and the road is being improved still more. And even these little roads to places like Moravava, to places like Poonarin, they've done enough work to allow us to move. So I believe that in a few months' time, connectivity will be really superb. And Professor, you have also worked uh, with uh, the, His Excellency, the President, in many instances. So how do you see President's role as a leader and also more essentially in the process of reconciliation? Well, you know, I have been forbidden as a public servant to say anything positive or negative about presidential candidates, so I won't really answer that question. But I think in terms of the general principles on which this government has been moving and the work I've been, I've been seeing, I think you can see a definite effort to bring the country together in every sense, through infrastructural development, through connectivity, through language policies, and above all, through eliminating a terrorist force, but distinguishing it absolutely from the Tamil people. And I think this positive nature of working together is something that must continue. And also, uh, Professor, another question I wanted to ask was that we are very familiar with the role of the military in defeating terrorism and bringing the conflict to the end. But uh, we hardly hear about the role of the military in the context of reconciliation and disaster management. What is your opinion of our role, uh, the role of the soldiers? Well, I think they're doing a fantastic job. I also think that a myth has developed, you know, when the operation began, there was a lot of what I would call Colombo people who were deeply critical of the military and saw them as the enemy. That is absolute nonsense. 
you know, the military has perhaps one of the best records in the world in terms of uh, decent, clear fighting. You know, we took a long time because they were very conscious of their obligations. And I think that wonderful episode in which they helped so many thousands to come over shows their priorities. But this military has always done this. It does it in other countries. You know, sometimes get annoyed with foreigners who say, why are you involving soldiers? And I said, look, in any country in the world, the military is at the forefront of disaster relief. You know, I was in the Philippines the other day and we were comparing our acts. They take part. But you see, for some reason, the myth sprang up in Sri Lanka that the military is the enemy of some of the people. They're not. You could see that plainly. This has always been the case. I remember in 1988 when I went up to Trincomalee, Denzil Kobekadu, he was in charge then, his soldiers were digging toilets for the Tamil schools. So they had a long tradition. He was one of the best people who understood that a military offensive has to be accompanied by sheer commitment to the people. This time round, I found all the security forces commanders in charge of the Vavinia, in charge of uh, Jaffna, in charge of uh, Kilinochi, they are all their juniors. They were doing so much work. I mean, the soldiers were helping to build houses. I found one of the most delightful stories I found, I was going, asking the people, do you have any, any problems? I told you in one village they had some problems, everywhere else they were very happy, except one wonderful old lady who really started what was a long diatribe in Tamil. And then it turned out that she was actually complaining about her daughter. And there were these soldiers building a house for her in the compound because she had decided she didn't want to be in the same house as the daughter. Now it seems to me that these are incidents that show so much trust they have in our soldiers and not in the family. The same thing has happened in every other respect. And the soldiers were cleaning up the Corvilles, you know, trying to do as much of this before Taipungal. They had told you they were cleaning up the wells. There's a fantastic job. And of course, when you look at the terrain, you know, I went off to Muldatibu. You know, that operation was fantastic. You know, those task forces that moved, moved through difficult terrain. When I saw the bunkers Prabhakar had built up with cement that we had sent up, and the force that he employed, I think the way our soldiers achieved that victory was fantastic. And now that they've turned so swiftly into a force that is cleaning, helping, is a remarkable tribute to, as I said, the platoon commanders, the men themselves, and of course the generals who are in charge of each of these different divisions. I think that's strong commitment and we must appreciate that. Yes, we're speaking to Professor Rajiv Vijay Singha. He's the Secretary of the Ministry of Disaster Management and Human Rights. So he was just touching upon very crucial aspects of the role of the soldiers and the military in the post-conflict era. And he said that role is something that everybody has to recognize because they have swiftly moved into a nation-building exercise. Moving on to another area, Professor. Um, the international context mostly. We also know that there was a very controversial interview given by Mr. Sarat Fonseca to the leader in December and as a result Philip Alston, the special rapporteur of the UN on extrajudicial killing inquired and you replied to this inquiry and this particular letter was asked by, instructed by the government to be withdrawn. So at that time the opposition including the opposition and also the paper leader. They uh, sort of made allegations saying that this is ample evidence, the withdrawal of this the letter that you sent was evidence of government using these statements as political capital to gain more mileage to their presidential campaign. And also at the same time there were legal experts pointing out the very serious and grave consequences that emanate from this statement because it can be treated as prima facie evidence. So Professor, I think you are in the best position to let our viewers know what exactly happened and the reasons for withdrawal of this letter. Well, I mean, I